This is Pioneer Field Agronomist Scott Everscurp with a weekly agronomy report. This past week has seen the early planted corn, especially the Easter planting. Uh, looks like that corn is going to be tasseling here very shortly. A few early, early tassels starting to show up, but in the next five to seven to ten days, a lot of that corn is going to be in full tassel, full pollination. So with that comes uh, the need to really start watching for diseases in the cornfields, things like gray and northern being reported, a uh, little bit of gray here and there, not a lot of northern being found yet. Probably the other thing getting some talk in the countryside is the rust, um, southern rust, common rust. The biggest thing to, to denote about these two specific pathogens, especially coming off last year and the heavy rust year, southern rust year we had, is just to make sure you're identifying which one is which. So southern rust obviously going to be mainly just on the upper side of the leaf going to be almost like a dusting of rust on the leaf will wipe off very easy you know on your fingers and you'll be able to see the rust colored spores on your fingers or on a, on a light colored shirt you'll definitely see it common rust on the other hand is going to be typically on both sides of the leaf the upper surface and the lower sieve and the lower surface be more of a pustule you won't get near the dust off of the spores and uh, or the rust colored uh, on, on your hands or on your shirt. So so definitely make sure you're telling the difference between the two. The main reason is southern rust, as we learned from last year, can be a very aggressive pathogen. Uh, so make sure if, if it is southern rust in the field that we're uh, watching it closely. Sometimes it pays to, once you identify it, to, to come back to those spots for one, two, three days in a row and just see what the progression actually looks like. Um, before just finding the first little speck and then, then spraying right away. Uh, try and try and check the disease progression by, by scouting several days in a row. From a standpoint of timing, in, you know, in a perfect world, a post-pollination application of fungicide has probably given us the best results, um, but that's kind of in the absence of any, any, any real pathogen, any real pathogen pressure. Uh, if, if we do get in this scenario where southern rust is coming and coming on hard, you may have to push those applications up to stop that thing before it really gets going in the cornfields. From a soybean standpoint, uh, as I've been looking at a lot of beans here in the last few, the last few days to the last 10 days, um, looking at weed control mainly. Um, seeing weed control looks very good for the most part. Probably seeing a few escapes, which really look to be a coverage issue more than anything, where we had some really thick spots of weeds, um, and maybe the gallonage wasn't quite right on the chemical. Uh, we're seeing a few escapes, whether it be with Liberty or with anything else. So make sure as you're making these post applications, you're getting the gallonage up to, uh, to, to make sure we're getting very good coverage on the weeds. And everything with that now, with any delay in spraying at all, we're seeing the weeds grow very fast, so we're quickly moving out of that three to four inch weed window. So we're going to have to make sure everything on the label is right to try and make sure we take these weeds down. With that also, some of the earliest planted beans, the May beans, are entering some reproductive stages. So starting to see some blooms on some of these beans. Just be aware that all the herbicide labels, specifically Dicamba, specifically Liberty, do have label restrictions on how late you can spray into the re reproductive stages. So make sure you are reading those labels and understanding what stage your beans is in or in when you're making those applications. Uh, don't want any adverse effects like burning blooms off or uh, consequently getting a reduction in, uh, in pod count. As always, if you have any other questions, uh, please contact your local Pioneer rep. Thanks.